Okay, first things first. This is pretty loud, so hopefully you can hear me good enough over it. But we have a pair of Cisco A's 5400 voice gateways here. These are very similar to regular Cisco routers. The top one is an AS5400 XM, and the bottom one is the older standard AS5400. So these are just like regular Cisco routers, 2800, 2900, 3600, all the regular integrated services routers. However, they are optimized for high density voice and dial in, dial out services. So I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of detail on these specific routers right now. They really deserve their own video and they can do all sorts of interesting things. However, what I'm using them for right now is for their modem cards. One of the main applications of these routers was to provide dial-up service. So here we have an NP108 card. These, of course, are totally different than the WIC and SM and NM cards that we see in regular Cisco routers, but this has 108 digital modems on it. It's really similar to the Portmaster and the US Robotics Total Control and the, uh, what are some others, Ascend TNT and Ascend uh, Max remote access servers that would provide high density dial-up connections. That's what these were used for a lot. So NP108 card, 108 digital modems. They're completely software-based modems, V.92 and 56K capable. And you can get other cards for them. So this top one is an AS5400XM. Supports more things, it's newer, it has a faster processor and all that. So these are the voice feature cards for them, which are just a whole bunch of PVDMs PVDM 2-64s to be specific on a card. But, uh, so these are primarily used if you're using these gateways just like you would a regular Cisco router. However, these next port modules will also do some voice functions. Not all voice functions, however, they can accept incoming voice calls. They can initiate and uh, accept ISDN data connections and fax connections. And you can do, of course, regular dial-up in and out. I'm trying to keep my finger out of the lens here. So, I was inspired by a video that the Serial Port released recently, where they connected a whole bunch of US Robotics Courier and Multitech and a few other modems to a Windows XP computer through, the, through some serial expanders, and set up PPP Multilink and made a whole bunch of simultaneous connections to their Total Control Access server, and made a really high-speed link aggregated dial-up connection with it. Now, as I said, these can accept dial-up calls and they can also initiate dial-up calls using a dialer interface. Typically, you would configure a dialer interface for dial-on-demand routing with an analog modem connected to the aux port or through async interfaces or for ISDN data calls to initiate a call to another location when needed or for a backup WAN connection to a dial-up ISP. But they will do PPP multi-link, both on incoming and outgoing. So what I've done is I've configured the top one here for dial-in. So it accepts incoming calls and answers them with its modems and acts as a PPP server and will basically work as an ISP. So it has an ethernet connection here that's going to the rest of my own network. The bottom one, however, has an ethernet connection going directly to my laptop here, and it is configured for dial out. So this one will actually initiate connections to, bottom one will initiate connections to the top one. And it's all doing it over this T3 link. So one thing that these gateways can do that pretty much like not many other Cisco things, if any, can do is channelize T3 voice. So usually a T3 port will act as a high speed serial interface just as it's literally, you just configure it like a WAN serial interface like any other would be. However, T3s are actually, they are kind of like a T1. A T1 is multiplexing a whole bunch of DS zeros or individual phone lines or 64K channels. A T3 is multiplexing 28 T1s. So a channelized T3 interface, like what these have, can split out a T3 into its own 28 T1s and have them show up just as if they were T1 ports. And then of course, you could configure those T1 ports for either data or voice, and you, if you use voice, you can split them out into their 64k uh, time slots. And that's what I'm doing in this case. I have, both of these are configured to split the 28 T1s out into T1 controllers, and then use each T1 as a ISDN PRI link between the two. 
So the top one is acting as network side, the bottom one is acting as user side, and I have all of those T1 PRIs in a trunk group. So when the bottom one is dialing out, it's just picking a random time slot on a random T1 in the T3 to connect to the other one. So this is not a data connection in a way, it's being used for PRI voice between the two. Well, I say voice, but it's really ISDN, but it's using it for circuit switched calls, not as a data interface. But and anyway, that's more info than you need, but I will be posting the configurations of these two routers. Um, I need to clean them up first, but then I will post the relevant configs on my website and I'll link to that in, my, in the description of this video. And I'll also link to the serial ports video in the description. So, as I was saying, and by the video title probably, this is just doing PPP multi-link between these two routers over that T3, but with 100 simultaneous connections, which is way more than you would ever do in any reasonable circumstance. I mean, to be fair, the amount that the serial port did was way more than you'd ever do in any reasonable circumstance. <laughs> but why I'm only doing 100, even though you could technically do 216 by combining all the modems on both these NP108s, and there's two NP108s in each, is after a certain point, it doesn't seem to make a difference. And I'm sure it's because this is absolutely not what they're meant for. <laughs> like, you would never do this in any realistic scenario. So I'm sure there are ways I could have optimized it or, you know, reasons that it doesn't work better than why 200 modems doesn't work any better than 100 modems. But either way, I've done 100 because it's a good number and any more than that seems to make no difference. So this laptop is of course connected to ethernet on the bottom one. So the ethernet connection this laptop has is going over that 100 times modem PPP multi-link connection between these two. So if we look on, this is a telnet connection into the bottom router. If I do uh, show int dialer zero, here's the dialer interface. So that 192.168 address is the one that, that's the address that the bottom router was assigned over PPP by the top router. So that's basically a WAN address, even though it's in a private subnet. And then if we do show PPP multi-link, we look here, member links 100. And this connection has been up for one hour and 42 minutes. And here's all the different async interfaces. So each modem on an NP108 card will show up as its own async interface in the iOS configuration. So we just have a whole bunch of simultaneous asynchronous connections here in this multi-link uh, bundle. And then if I show the active modem connections on the cards, you'll see we just have a whole bunch of 33.6K symmetrical connections here. And it just keeps going. <laughs> so we have 100, 100 simultaneous 33.6K modem connections between the two. Now, I would have shown you this connecting. However, I have not figured out any way to make these routers when they're configured for dial out, I've never figured out a way to make them dial their channels simultaneously. It will only do it sequentially. And with each modem connection taking about 20 seconds to establish, it takes a little over half an hour to establish all 100 links between these routers, which that made it really hard to test whenever I wanted to make a change that would require me to shut the interface down and then bring it back up. Oh, it just took so long to test it. But in any case, there's all the active modem connections and I can do my typical test of pinging Cloudflare. So 150-ish milliseconds latency there. But this actually performs really well for what it is. For being 100 modems, I'm gonna go ahead and just load speedtest.net. And as you saw, that this is a modern website and it just loaded really quickly over this modem connection. So let me run a speed test here. And it's not perfect. Like theoretically the bandwidth should be higher than this, 
but it ends up being around two and a half megabits per second worth of modem bandwidth. Symmetrical. Well, there's the download. And you see the ping is 160 milliseconds. And some other speed test websites did have a lot of trouble with this connection. And some applications do have a lot of trouble with this connection. I don't know if, I mean, I'm sure it has to do with you would never do this realistically. You would never have 100 simultaneous PPP modem connections like that. So it's, of course, not optimized for this purpose, but that's, that's about the highest speed I've been able to get between these two. So that's running a speed test. Let's load this video, which is the serial ports video I was talking about. And here we are, just running a YouTube video, like it's nothing. So if I change the quality here, oh, it's already set to 1080p. Yeah, so 1080p YouTube real time over this 100 modem link aggregation. So that just works just fine. And I did try a few other things. I tried doing a Discord call with one of my friends over this and that just worked flawlessly. I didn't have to change the bandwidth or adjust anything really, it just worked. And I also tried doing a screen share over that call, which also just worked. And I tried watching a YouTube video over that screen share on that Discord call over this, and it, it literally just worked just fine. So surprisingly, it actually is pretty decent for how cursed this is. But I don't really know what else to test with it. I want to try running Minecraft over it or some form of game. Just haven't gotten that set up. But I mean just thought I'd document this absolute monstrosity of a configuration. So yeah, that's that. Again, I'll link to the Serial Ports video in the description. I will post, I'll clean up my configs and I'll put them on my website and link to that. And then one thing that, yeah, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to post my configs for this because it was really hard to find. It was easy to set up the dial outside for PPP Multilink, but I had all sorts of weird issues with dial in on PPP Multilink, which is weird. You'd think it'd be the other way around, but definitely we'll post my configs for that. And I think that's about it.